Hello, this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf. Today I want to talk a little bit about sodium, and it's one of the few elements that we really uh, have to watch out about how high sodium levels accumulate in the soil to prevent damage to the soil structure and also to prevent stress in the turf grasses. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of those elements that we don't have as much control over how much goes on as we'd like because it's uh, almost always delivered in irrigation water. So sodium is one of those elements that you're going to be a victim of your irrigation water quality and there's some things you can do to improve water quality a little bit but not, not too much. Uh, you're pretty much going to be a victim of how much uh, rainfall is delivered uh, during those periods of irrigation or between periods of irrigation. Uh, to, get, to illustrate the accumulation of sodium and, and how it interacts with rainfall during the course of the seasons, we're going to look at a couple of locations uh, out in Southern California where we have long periods of drought where all of the sodium that's applied to the soil comes from the irrigation water. And we'll see in a couple of cases with a low sodium situation versus a high sodium situation, how much uh, sodium will accumulate and also get an idea of how much rainfall is needed to knock that sodium out of the soil. We'll also provide some guidelines to take a look at uh, your irrigation water to see whether or not uh, you're gonna have some problems with sodium accumulation. So let's take a look at the data. In this table, we see in the left column the no restriction values. That water can be used safely on any turf type, on almost any soil condition, just as long as there's some uh, reasonable drainage. The other columns uh, represent the water quality from Friendly Hills and Santa Ana, uh, either alone at Santa Ana without amendment or Santa Ana with gypsum injection. What we see at the Friendly Hills location is a good quality water that only exceeds the no restriction guideline in the bicarbonate area of the uh, quality guidelines. Santa Ana, on the other hand, as you scan down the table, you'll see that bicarbonates are lower than uh, we observed at Friendly Hills, but when we compare sodium parts per million, we see that uh, Friendly Hills only reports 30 parts per million sodium compared to 117 parts per million at Santa Ana, and that exceeds the value that we are looking for in the left column, no restriction uh, guideline. Also, if we look down at the bottom uh, factor, the RSC, which is residual sodium carbonate, uh, we'd like to see that value below around one, and we see at Santa Ana that value is above uh, 2.7. Uh, on the right column is actually the amended water that is used at Santa Ana Country Club. Uh, this water is, uh, has gypsum injected to improve the conditions. You can see that the residual sodium carbonate uh, goes into the uh, desirable guideline, so there isn't a lot of uh, bicarbonate that is uh, being uh, delivered to the system. But still, you'll see as we compare these waters between Friendly Hills and uh, Santa Ana over the course of the year, how uh, sodium accumulates in the system just as a result of that extra amount of sodium uh, measured in parts per million in the irrigation water. Now to gain some perspective on when irrigation occurs, this precipitation graph uh, illustrates the problem that we see in areas that are arid for long periods of time. On the bottom we see months of the year and you can see starting at January, February, and March there is a significant amount of rainfall that drops down from May all the way through uh, October before rainfall starts to pick up again. So what we're going to look at is the springtime soil test values taken in uh, March, April, May sort of period of time and compare the amount of rainfall that was delivered in different years to how much sodium we have remaining in the soil after the rainfall. We'll also look at the percent reduction in sodium based on the sodium that accumulates through the irrigation system and the amount of rainfall and then the resulting sodium load in the soil after the rainfall has leached some of that uh, uh, sodium from the soil. So let's take a look at the differences between uh, both the uh, Friendly Hills and the Santa Ana locations and we'll do a little bit more detailed work on the Santa Ana location. Here are the results from Friendly Hills accumulation and these are the quarters of the year. Uh, the second quarter of the year representing the soil conditions after the winter rainfall period and then the third and fourth quarters of the year we see sodium levels accumulate. The target that we're looking for, or the level we want to keep sodium below, is 110 parts per million. And we can see with the low sodium containing irrigation water at Friendly Hills, which only had 30 parts per million sodium, 
we can see that sodium never accumulated above the average 110 parts per million that we'd like to uh, keep sodium below to prevent risk to uh, plant stress and rapid blight. Unlike the Friendly Hill situation, irrigation over the summer results in very high levels of sodium as we can see over 200 parts per million on the average at Santa Ana Country Club. In this case, it's going to be rainfall that drives those high levels down during the winter to result in low levels in the springtime. And the lower the levels are starting in the springtime, the longer the period is of reduced stress and a little bit easier to manage diseases like rapid blight. So let's take a look at uh, the Santa Ana situation a little more carefully and pin down sort of what happens from year to year over the course of a number of years to see how the rainfall interacts and reduces sodium levels in the field. In this case, we're looking at rainfall in inches between November and March of each year. And we're looking at, on the y-axis, the spring soil sodium parts per million. And remember, our target is less than 110 parts per million. And from this graph, and this represents nine years of data to give a rough idea, uh, we see that you're going to need somewhere around 10 inches of rain to drop sodium levels consistently below uh, 110 parts per million. So it's a lot of rain uh, that needs to fall in the winters. Otherwise, in the springtime, sodium levels are going to be excessive. Let's take another look or another spin on this data to look at percent reduction of sodium based on rainfall. In this graph, we are still looking at uh, the rainfall between March and November in inches on the x-axis, but on the y-axis, we're now looking at reduction in sodium. This is data from Santa Ana uh, Country Club also. So in this case, it looks again like we need about 10 inches of rain to drop sodium levels by 50%. These couple examples give you a good idea of how sodium can accumulate in the soil during periods of drought. Uh, refer to the guidelines associated with this video for additional information. And also we'd like to give our thanks to uh, David Zardi, who is superintendent at Santa Ana Country Club, and also Matt Marsh, who is now there, and David Michael at uh, Friendly Hills Country Club for their support in these projects.